Oh, wow. That's a good point. I never did one of these for the system arrow. Let's do one now. Wardrobe! So tell us about your latest project. What's that? You'd rather just do the interview spread? Oh, okay. When asked to tell us a little bit about itself, the Sesamero has chosen the full Cookie Monster. Now, Feist, it should be noted the Cookie Monster is the trickster figure of the Sesamero. So I believe this is the Sesamero saying, I am chock full of fun. That tracks, you really are. When asked about its strengths, the Sesamero gives us the 13 of Macroloons. A card that has itself gained meaning based on its shortcomings. Are they balloons? Are they macaroons? Are they yo-yos? Is it a sky full of butts? What could it be? It is up to the reader to decide what they see in it. So, a uh, good answer, Sesamero. Let's move on to limitations. In the limitation spot, we have the purple rectangle. A card that represents pressure and the conflicting uh, emotions that often come with them. I believe this tracks with the idea that I don't use the Sesamero to answer questions about dark subject matters such as terminal illness, self-harm, etc. When asked, what are you here to teach? The Sesamero gives us the two of boats representing a moment in time when two paths cross. I believe this is a sign that the Sesamero would like to, you know, teach us to value that moment in time when our paths cross with others, to savor and appreciate that unique moment that may never happen again, while also acknowledging that we are all on our own journeys. When asked, how can I best work with you, the Sesamero has given me the umpire card. The umpire takes on the important job of keeping the game fun for everyone. They enforce the rules with confidence in order to keep everything fair. I believe this is a sign that I can best work with the Sesamero by being fair and by being confident. And by making sure everybody is having a good time. But most importantly, not taking any guff from anybody that's trying to uh, subvert the rules, you know? Finally, when asked what is the outcome of our relationship, the Sesamero offers the lemonade stand. Perhaps the sign that we are to offer the world something sweet and delicious and to not be afraid to charge a reasonable price for such. Perhaps then the Sesamero would not be offended if I was to remind everybody that you can get your own custom readings on Memo. Check my bio for more info. Well, listen, Sesamero, I want to thank you very much for sitting down with us. I know you got such a busy schedule, so many projects in the works. Hey, one more question before you go. How are you and Dwayne getting along? Oh, none of our business, I suppose. All right, well, the Sesamero has spoken. Have a lovely day, everybody. Your problem card is the inbox. I believe this to be a sign that you are in a situation you do not wish to be in. But it could also represent crawling within yourself. Now, it could be an attempt at introspection, but it could just as easily be hibernation. Either way, I feel that the fan card and the five of nightcaps uh, have some nice suggestions for you. Now, in addition to symbolizing uh, enthusiasm, the fan card also represents keeping a cool head and taking good care of yourself which pairs well with the Five of Nightcaps. I believe these are signs that self-care is of the utmost importance in your current position in your life. Now, sometimes the Five of Nightcaps also stands in as wizard hats, a sign of seeking wisdom and help from others. If you have an internet connection, and since you're watching this, I presume you do, you can seek out low-cost and no-cost resources to help you on your journey. And in that, I wholeheartedly wish you the best of luck. The Sisamero has spoken. The Nine of Butterflies in the Problem Spot speaks of uh, transformation. Caterpillars have no idea what it's like to fly through the sky, and yet every moment within them is about working towards that first flight. Speaking of flight, the kite in the short-term solution slot is interesting. It takes effort and support to keep a kite flying. And if you want to play with the kite, you got to put in the work. There's no substitute. So the real question is, is the kite truly a toy you wish to play with? Do you truly seek to fly? Now let's look to the pie in the long-term slot. Generally speaking, everybody likes pie. Of course, we have no really good way of knowing what's in this pie. I mean, I suppose you could ask the people that bake pies. Maybe the person who baked the pie left behind a recipe. Either way, I believe this card represents the rewards of your efforts. So I believe the overall message is, find out what's in the pie. And if you want what's in it, don't be afraid of what you gotta do to get it. The Sesamero has spoken. I believe the top card in the problem spot speaks to your motivations. 
People come to you to fulfill these needs because they feel, and you agree with them, that you are the best person for this job. That may explain why you've let it get to this point. In the short term slot is Asuka offering you a sandwich. On its surface, a reminder that you need to take care of your own needs, but also an important reminder that you have needs in the first place. That you really should be taking some of that competent, professional energy and putting it towards yourself. Now in the long term slot is the two of boats. Now these two boats look like they're going in the same direction. But what if the boats have two different destinations? At some point, they're going to separate. It is perfectly okay to share a journey with others and even provide mutual aid. But as these journeys grow apart, it is important to ask yourself, at what point does helping them on their journey steer me away from my own? Plan accordingly. The Sussumero has spoken. So when the day card comes out as a problem card, I, I like to remind myself that Ernie is staring at the sun. Which, in case you were doodling in science classes, uh, is the thing you're not supposed to do. I believe this is a sign you are concentrating a lot on the process and not so much on the landscape. So in the short term, we're seeing the red triangle, the sign of passionate thought. Which pairs well with the long term slot, amazing Mumford holding a rabbit. I believe this is a sign that you should be focusing on a goal to move towards. See, Mumford loves doing magic, is his whole thing. And in this card, Mumford is a magician and he has successfully done a magic trick, producing a rabbit. I believe this is a sign you should come up with a goal and treat it like a destination. Think about some things you want to do, but your ADHD has been making it difficult for you to do those things. That way, not only do you have some nice healthy goals to focus on and work towards, but when you accomplish them, it becomes a sign of success. Good luck to you. The Sussumero has spoken. In the problem card slot is the different card, which I believe speaks to your anxieties. Which is to say, it's not so much that the difference is the problem, but that Ernie is treating the ducks differently, uplifting one and not the other. I believe this to be a sign that this is what you wish to avoid. Now the watch can represent passage of time, and the Black Pentagon is of course the sign of deep mysteries. But it's in the long term slot. Taken as a whole, I read it like this. Think back on the time you have spent with your family. Meditate on all the times that them not having that information has had a negative effect on your relationship with them. If you come to the conclusion that those situations would have come out better if they had all the facts, then giving him this gift of knowledge would improve things in the future. Just remember something. You don't owe them this information. It is a gift, not an obligation, and they shouldn't need it to treat you with respect. The Sesamero has spoken. Regular viewers probably looked ahead to the long-term slot, but uh, calm down, we'll get there. Now, I find it interesting that the problem slot is Bert and Ernie putting the rectangles in the rectangles box, and yet the short-term solution is the yellow rectangle. I believe this is a sign that your father is trying to forcefully contextualize the situation, while at the same time leaving out factors that absolutely should be contextualized. I believe this is a sign that your father is throwing caution to the wind and ignoring important facts. Now, notice how the yellow in the rectangle is also present in the kite. The thing that your father is ignoring is a big part of who you are. And if the yellow quadrant of this kite was missing, well, the whole kite would just stop working. Now, the thing is, the kite only represents his image of you. That, you are not responsible for. But in order for this relationship to work, he has to accept all of the kite as it is. Rich is never getting off the ground. And of course, remember, he is not owed a kite to play with. The Sesamero has spoken. The problem card is the full cookie jar. You have an abundance and your needs are being met, and you're not sure how to go forward with it. The short-term solution is the rainbow card. I believe this is a sign that sunny skies are ahead, and for you, the sky's the limit. Well, that doesn't really help us narrow it down, does it? So let's look to the gray pentagon in the long-term slot, a sign of ponderable mysteries. And that really doesn't answer our question either. So tell you what, it's time to draw a clarification card. For clarification, we can see we have drawn the advertisement card, in which Grover is shouting to the heavens that Z-Manzilla makes cool things. I believe this is a sign, from the universe, that you should buy cool things. And if you look very closely to the symbolism of this card, you may even find some clues as to where to start your journey. Lincoln Bio All Sales Final Sesamero has spoken. The blue square in the problem slot suggests that you are focusing on the sort of negatives of the situation. I tell you from personal experience, selling art is not an easy gig. Thing is, if you focus too much on the bad, you don't allow yourself to see the good. 
And the good part of offering your art is people like it. As demonstrated by the Four of Goldfish, a sign of communities. But see, these goldfish can't exactly go out and get the things they want and need. It has to be brought to them. And sometimes they even need a little help contextualizing it. Which is what I believe the Nine card is about. See, the Count likes numbers and he likes to count things. But this is only one card with the number nine on it, and he's showing it to the goldfish. He's explaining the concept of nine to the goldfish so they can better appreciate what it is he's all about. And I believe this is the skill you should focus on to develop success in your art sales. Good luck. The Sesamero has spoken. This may be one of the most straightforward readings I've ever gotten. Actually, no, that would be the horse-sized duck one. Maybe the cookie one. Okay, top five. But I suppose that's what happens when chaos hears its name being called, you know. Not a problem card is the Twelve of Doodlebugs. Very samey, very organized. No wonder that a chaos art like Sesamero would see this as a problem and place it in the problem card slot. We see the Grey Pentagon in the short-term slot. That's a sign of uh, intriguing mysteries. Another way of phrasing that is fascinating unknowns. Sesamero believes you need more of that. And the Ten of Fruits is inviting you to take that sameness and just mix it up all over the place. I believe the Sesamero is inviting you, nay, calling you, to turn order into chaos by filtering it through the unexpected. Go sow a little discord. The Sesamero has spoken. There's some very powerful symbolism in this draw. Well, the book card is in the problem slot. If this was any more on the nose, the Sesamero would be a mustache. But see, I think this anxiety also speaks to a very good quality that you have. For this anxiety comes from the understanding that knowledge is power. And fear is the negative flip side of respect. I believe this is a sign that you should acknowledge the respect you have for the knowledge you seek. Now here we see a progression from the four of goldfish to the three of uh, regular fish. Notice that how, when time progresses, the numbers get lower and the bowls are removed. Which, as a duo, represents greater freedom and less complication. Was it not the great philosopher, Spider-Man's Aunt May, who said that when you help others, you help yourself? I believe this to be a sign that that's what's happening here. Embrace the power of knowledge and be well. The Sesamero has spoken. The night card in the problem slot speaks of tasks that seem easier than they really are. In this image, the Count is trying to count the stars, and he's thinking, oh, there's only five of them. But in reality, there are billions of stars. So adjust your expectations accordingly. To continue this theme, we got the one of duckies next to the six of birdseed in the solution slots. On the surface, the duck's a bird. Birds eat birdseed. Have some birdseed. Once again, in reality, not that simple. Ducks don't eat birdseed. Similarly, a beard is not just growing some facial hair and hoping for the best. You grow, you trim, you shave, you groom, you oil, you gotta find a shaving pattern that works with how it naturally comes out of your face. See, you don't just grow a quality beard, you earn it. So be honest with yourself, are you ready to put in the work? If so, then let it grow. The Sesamero has spoken. The problem card slot is Ernie holding the eggs. I take this as a sign about your concern of protecting your children from being broken. However, given the scenario you've presented, you are not protecting them from the inevitable, merely delaying it. Which brings us to the lemonade card, the short-term slot. Zoe had lemons, decided to make lemonade with them, and to sell that lemonade. And at the end of the day, she gets to keep any money she got, but she also has the responsibility of dealing with the lemon peels and the glassware and any leftover lemonade that she didn't sell. The same is true of your ex. And in this scenario, you're offering to clean up his lemon peels and wash up his glassware, but let him keep the money. Now, long-time viewers no doubt recognize the kite card, the long-term slot. And I don't disagree with that unspoken assessment. But it's also a reminder that an active, playful relationship with your children is healthy. If your children have the proper space and ground support, they'll still fly. The Sesamero has spoken. The problem is represented here by the 20 of stars. I take this as a sign that your greatest challenge is going to be standing out in a crowd, as it were. Now, there's two main ways that stars find to stand out. One is, of course, to burn brighter, but the other is to be part of a constellation. Perhaps a sign that every member of the production team is now on promotions detail. Now, I believe the white square in the short-term slot is a good sign. You know, no usual curveballs, standard promotion techniques should suffice. However, this could also be a warning that you'll need to put in extra effort to stand out. 
Which leads us to the long-term solution card, pie. Now, the promise of pie is enough to bring most people to the dessert table. But what's interesting about this pie is we don't actually know what's in it. So maybe suggesting folks could find out what's in the pie. Well, that might be the level of intrigue necessary to give you an edge. Shine bright, stand out, be intriguing. The Sesamero has spoken. In the Sesamero, triangles are a symbol of thought. Now, the red triangle in the problem slot, uh, along with the regular or pizza triangle in the long-term slot, well, this is a sign of your thoughts becoming more complex, focused, and nuanced as time goes on. Of course, it doesn't do it alone. It has something to do with what's uh, being represented by the socks card in the short-term slot. In the socks card, we can see that Snuffy is wearing socks. But you think, you know, Snuffy doesn't wear shoes, Snuffy's covered in fur. Well, what's Snuffy need socks for? Now, I've come up with a lot of answers to that question in the past. However, in this reading, it occurs to me the answer is, what business is it of mine? Snuffy likes the socks. Let Snuffy wear the socks. Who knows, maybe Snuffy just tried on a pair of socks one day and decided Snuffy likes them. Now, maybe this is the role your partner plays in your development. Physical intimacy is not a race. It's an experience. And the best experiences are the kind you share. The Sesamero has spoken. Now, in the Sesamero, the hexagon is a symbol of life. And in a more specific way, you know, the taking care of that life. So I believe the orange hexagon to be a symbol of the turmoil and anxiety that you're feeling as you start your self-care journey. Now, the Seven of Porridges is a sign of basic sustenance. I believe this is a reminder that your therapy is not a magical, esoteric process. And to continue the porridge metaphor, not necessarily the thing you would rather be consuming at that time. But hey, in order for it to work, you got to keep that sustenance going seven days a week. Do that, and your reward is the long-term card, the Three of Fishies. A sign of being able to move freely forward on your journey with a nice big smile on your face. Now let's wrap up with a quick analysis of the numbers. We go from 6 to 7 to 3. In the short term, the work will feel a little harder. But stick with it, and it'll get a lot easier. Put in the work and stay on the path. The Sesamero has spoken. The problem card is Zoe opening a square gift. I believe this to be a contextualization of what it is you are truly asking. If the universe will grant you such luscious locks upon your chinny chin chin. Now in the short term slot is the book, a sign uh, to educate yourself. You see, great facial hair is not a gift, it is a reward. A reward you earn for yourself after months and months of growing and shaving and studying and grooming and oiling and so on. And after that, you've got to be prepared to build an entire look around it. Now with all that having been said, the 14 of bottle caps is a card of open opportunities. 14 bottle caps implies the opening of 14 bottles. I believe this is the universe saying, go on, take your chances. Grow that facial hair, see what you can do with it. Just, you know, set reasonable goals. Like being one-tenth is amazing. The Sesamero has spoken. When some people look to the 13 of macaroons, they see balloons. Others see macaroons. Others see yo-yos, and even others see a sky full of butts. I believe this to be a sign that at the root of this problem is a difference in perspectives. Short-term solution card is the pull card, which is a sign that if you were to go ahead on this path, you would be the one doing all the labor. But one would wonder, what do you stand to gain from this labor? For that, we look to the newspaper card, which calls us to read the signs of the situation itself. Now, if these cards are any indicator, uh, there is a difference of perspective in play, and you are the one doing all the work. So there are signs this wasn't working out for you very well. And if this is the question you're asking, well, that implies there's no feedback coming from your ex, which would itself be a sign of their level of interest. Think of it this way. If nothing changes, you're likely to get the same results. Maybe put that effort towards someone who'll appreciate it. The Sesamero has spoken. The Night card challenges you to consider what it is you're asking. Are you asking if you are the star that shines brightest in the night sky? If so, that could be why it's in the problem slot. Now, Tully in the short-term slot is inviting you to just stop for a moment and consider what it is you're asking. It's all good to try to be cool, or hip, or groovy, or the bee's knees. Of course, the thing is, I don't think anybody's been the bee's knees for like a hundred years now. Which goes to show you what kind of an ephemeral, context-sensitive thing being cool really is. With that said, the eggs in the long-term slot gives me hope. I believe this to be a sign that you are not yet in your final form. And really, it just depends on what recipe you end up becoming a part of. I think the lesson here is contribute your own unique perspective to the things that you think are cool, 
and eventually cool will just happen. Who knows, you may even be the one to make Rufus happen. The Sesamero has spoken.